Okay, so if you have looked at different types of ways that transpiration can happen, and you might even have designed an experiment or you will be designing an experiment about transpiration, you know that there are multiple factors that can affect the rate of transpiration, including light, temperature, humidity, and wind. And you should be able to explain how each one of those factors uh, can actually affect transpiration. So we've also talked about in other areas of biology about the nature of science and about using models. And so in this new syllabus, uh, they're really emphasizing the nature of science. And you'll see models being mentioned quite a bit. And it's one way that people approach trying to solve problems in science is by creating these models. Um, Watson and Crick, for the, the discovery of the structure of DNA, built models to help them understand things. And so in this case here, here are three examples of um, models to demonstrate how water is transported. And in one of the further applications, you'll see how they've used these little bugs called aphids. Uh, they've used aphids, they used a little thing that comes out of their mouth called a stylet that they basically shove down into leaves to in order to suck out a sap from phloem from nutrients. They managed to use that and figure out a way to calculate the rates of phloem exchange. So that, that'll be in the next unit 9.2 in the 2014 syllabus about uh, phloem and how we learned about how the rate at which things actually move through phloem. So here we're looking at models of water transport. It's not actually too difficult if you look down here at these diagrams. So the first one here is uh, figuring out that water is adhesive. If you put tubing or thin tubes like this into water, you're going to see that the water is actually going to start rising. And so there's a couple things at, at play here. So this thing called a meniscus, you've seen this before. Now you can be able to explain it in terms of hydrogen bonding and uh, adhesion of the water molecules with the actual capillary tubing insides. Um, so water has these special properties that allow it to do that. If you use something like mercury, for example, uh, it doesn't have these same properties, these hydrogen bonding adhesive properties. So a mercury does not actually rise. And so that's one uh, model of water transport and how that works in xylem. This one you've done before or you will do. This is a simple chromatography. If you take paper and put it into some liquid or you put a little dot, they use this a lot in photosynthesis. Basically, uh, if you put it to paper, it will start to get wet. Even though you didn't drop the entire paper in, the water is actually going to start moving up. Uh, paper, as you know, is actually made uh, from plants, from plant material. And the water actually rises through the pores in the paper uh, made of cellulose cell walls. So the cellulose cell walls actually have pores for water to move through them. And so this is actually uh, happening through uh, these, these, this capillary action in the actual cell walls here, blotting filter or chromatography paper. You'll see a couple of experiments like that. The third model that's here is that the evaporation of water can cause tension, and this tension actually creates the pull, the, uh, the force that actually moves this water up through the plant. And so you can have something called porous pot. It's just basically um, a substance that a little container is made up of. It's similar to the cell wall, so a porous pot, this isn't a very good picture here, it's just a green block. But basically, uh, if you have water inside the actual pot with the tube sticking out, um, the pot actually has tiny, tiny little holes and water can escape, not in, the, in, not in liquid form, but it can actually evaporate from the surface. And as the water evaporates out the tiny, 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 tiny little holes, uh, the water actually continues to get pulled up. And then so the water will be able to move. So if you have something connected to the bottom and you can see like an air bubble or the end of the water, you'll see that the water is moving up this thing. Similar to cell wall, the water adheres. This has many narrow pores. As the water evaporates from the surface, the water is going to rise up and it is continuously drawn into the pot. So there you go. Three quick models of a water transport in xylem and how you can demonstrate some of the properties of water and how they contribute to helping plants to do transpiration or to move water through.